couple guys, maybe they're not leaders, but they're doing exactly what they should do. Yeah. But then you have the rest of the boys who are just kind of doing whatever and they're kind of just like kind of messing around, but they're serious here and there. And so who would be the outcast in that situation right there? The outcasts are the two the that two are actually are doing, the doing right it right. Yeah. And so I think with your team, what happened is you got so strict with them when you needed to, you know, you're being a hard ass with them like you should that slowly those two guys are actually doing everything right it started to trickle down and then it got to the point where oh if you're messing around that's not cool like you're the outcast or yeah. if you're not working as hard as we are then that's not cool that's not what you're supposed to be doing and i think that's ultimately how the culture itself gets built like everyone has their own role to play mm -hmm. so not everyone's gonna be a leader but are you gonna follow someone else's lead mm -hmm. I told my players this, and this is gonna be a theme throughout this spring season. Doesn't matter who's right. Yeah. It just matters that we get it right. We just gotta get it right. It's another bar, man. Bar. <laughs> Calm down, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got more of them in my back pocket. Just about wait. to be all the girls' IG captions for the rest <laughs> of the year, man. Keeping that up. You know. <laughs> Welcome back to the Footy Pod, Footy Family. I'm your host, Sean Afkamenia. I'm Evan Bozeman. He's talking into the mic this time, guys. It's easy when we don't have a couple of guests between us or a dog throwing up and another guest. <laughs> it's it's just like normal conversation. That's it. That's it. Yeah, we yeah. just having a normal combo over here. We don't have a guest today, so mm -hmm. it feels a little little weird. Yeah. A little lonely. A little lonely. But uh, nothing, nothing unusual. You know, we've nah, been... Yeah. We've been working together, just us two, for yeah. quite some time now. So it's just another mm -hmm. day in the life. We're just sitting a little closer than usual. And we're at night. You and know? we're staring at each other right in the eyes. We're looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at each other in the eyes. I'm feeling like, interrogated. <laughs> I'm probably going to ask you some difficult questions that may feel like an interrogation. But I can't wait to deflect. <laughs> <laughs> no deflection here, Evan. You better answer every question that I ask you. I'll do my best. So, Evan. Yeah. We knew mm -hmm. that we were going to do this podcast, just us two. Yeah. Because we had to keep it going. Last week, we had Soccer Dave on. Yeah. Great we had fun. a little bit of technical difficulties trying to get that all finalized and uh, get it uploaded mm -hmm. and published. But we finally did, and it put us a little bit behind. But we yeah. knew we got to stick to a schedule here. Yeah. We had we're to not, meet. We're, we're not going to we're not gonna be going any more weeks without putting out a podcast. It's got to be a pod people need it people need it people need it we got some important stuff to discuss yeah. and i know this is bringing value to people because i've gotten several messages from mm. people that are saying hey love what you're doing man there good you stuff go. you know yeah. and that's all we can ask for yeah. all we want to do is try to help bring some value to parents players whoever's listening mm. yeah just through our experiences um you know if you like it you like it yeah. cool it's not going to be the most popular show out no. there but guarantee it's going to be the realest yeah it'll hit the people they'll listen to stuff they'll hear what we're talking about you know they'll be able to actually kind of not implement into their lives but they're going to get like a new train of thought from it because even just from us doing the podcast with soccer dave like just him talking i mean you're learning stuff the whole time and that's all you can do at the end of the day that was a good one man so, I, love, really good. I love that guy's energy that was we, a solid pod oh great pod great pod we had some good, we had some good, uh, you know, back and forth on that one. So if you mm -hmm. haven't checked that episode out, definitely go back and look at that. If you enjoy what we're doing so far, guys, just give us a like, a subscribe, you know, <laughs> review. Like that's all we ask. I mean, you don't have to, but if you love us, you will. Yeah. Anyways, so going back to you know the conversation we had yesterday, we yeah. knew we were gonna do this podcast just us two. Um, and I asked you, you know, what should we talk about? What, mm -hmm. what, what, what topic should we focus on in this conversation? Mm -hmm. And you said, well, why don't we just talk about, you know, the progress you've made with your, with your team, with DKSC, you know, obviously you, you made a lot of progress with them yeah. and, and have, uh, developed them, you know, greatly from the time that you picked them up until now right yeah. and and they're a completely different group from mm -hmm. what you what you started with so i think people would really this is you right you're saying i think that people would really like to hear you yeah. know kind of what steps you've taken to get them to this point yeah for sure and 
that is no different from the steps that we are taking with our FF Academy teams two years ago. Not at all. It's just yours came a lot quicker, I would say. Kind of with how you're doing it with your boys, with your team. It's just like, obviously, I mean, just the ground that you covered over that from the start and up until now, just, I mean, you really literally it turned to fold. Like it was just night and day type of thing. I remember kind of when I brought up the topic to you, it was just, I was kind of, I'm excited to obviously see where the second half of your season goes. Cause obviously you have a big season ahead with your boys after coming off all those good results. They have another season starting, they have Dallas cup, all that stuff to look for. And I thought it'd be something interesting to kind of talk about just that break that happens in youth soccer, obviously in college, there's a break and there's nothing in the spring pros, probably international break, kind of some stuff. But at the youth level here, it's interesting because it is just a split break where they're not training for a bit or when they're training, they're doing futsal. And so my main thing was I'm interested to see how that continues. I think it'll continue well because like the, the groundwork that you laid. Oh, it will. It will. It will. I think it will as well. It's just one of those We're interesting. We're about to win everything this spring. It's just everything. one of those. Everything. I hope so. I'll be there. It's everything. just one of those interesting things where if a break happens within anything, it's like whenever you resume, is it going to pick up right where it left off? Yeah. Is it going to pick up maybe a little lower and then you get it back to that point? Maybe it just picks up really high or is it going to start back at the very beginning? And I think the, but I think the groundwork that you laid, you know, like kind of what you were like holding them to and how strict you're being with them and just making sure that they were doing all the right things themselves. I think that's something that's not going to get lost over just a month. No, no. Yeah. And it was, it was about two, three months, mm -hmm. you know, that we are kind of not, I guess. So we stopped, you know, training outdoor going three days a week in yeah. mid December. It's mm -hmm. now February. So mm -hmm. January. Yeah. Two months, yeah, two, months. two months. But through that whole time mm -hmm. we were doing futsal, yeah. which was always part of our, developmental structure with ff academy mm -hmm. through the winter we would play only futsal and every single year what we saw was our fall would be a little bit rough yeah. because we always had to start with a new team all of our best players would go to fc dallas or texans <laughs> or solar and they would think that that's like the better route for them because it's a big well-known club um and you know all the power to them yeah. right but for us, it was frustrating because mm -hmm. we knew we were on the right track. We knew what we were, the work we were doing. We were confident in that. Mm -hmm. So every fall, we'd basically have to start over with the teams that we had. So it was a brand new team, brand new season, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, with anything, it takes time to develop. Mm -hmm. You could be doing all the right things, but if the results aren't going your way, you start hearing that criticism that chit chat from the outside you know and if you're not convicted in your beliefs it can affect you it can it can change the way that you decide to do what you're doing or you can become even more convicted in what you're doing through that and we were always that way um so you know i knew that, that it was going to be a challenge picking up the team that i had I stepped into a new position working in the at the ECNL level, which, you know, was was a big step up from the teams that we had before. You I was step. ready yeah. for the challenge oh, yeah, for and sure. qualified for the challenge mm -hmm. for sure. But I knew that it was not just gonna happen overnight. No, it never does. I picked up a team that did not exist. Mm -hmm. It's not as if like I was a new coach for a pre-existing team. Yeah. I picked up a team that didn't exist. We had zero players on the roster. I had to basically form a new team. Yeah. I remember you hand selecting that. And I was coming out a couple of times watching and like, it was one of those things like even like with our teams in the past, when we would try and like pick out players and who to bring in, it was like, we were really got to take what you can get. Yeah. It wasn't like we couldn't really even be selected with it. It was like, we'd take what we can get who came our way, who we liked, that type of thing. And so it was interesting for you because you had just a massive player pool of players that were all very good, yeah, They're very technical. Which is a good problem to have, yeah, right? exactly. But also very challenging because from the level that we are at, of course, through individual training, through group training, I was famili familiar with players of that level. Mm -hmm. I've worked with plenty of high, high-level players, 
from you know eight nine years old high level players at that age to professionals mm -hmm. right so i know what is expected at that level yeah. but on a team basis i was not really familiar with the level yet yeah and so that was a new challenge it's like yes i see that these players have potential but do they cut it at that level because i didn't know i hadn't really seen many games at that level yet yeah. i couldn't really like identify you know who were top players at the ecnl level which is the highest level or just top players for classic one classic two you know because that's a different level too yeah so you know still a challenge mm -hmm. a big challenge and built that team up from scratch knew from the beginning that we're gonna struggle in the beginning i think that we struggled a lot more than i expected yeah uh because i assumed that the players that i were i was getting were were mature enough to mm -hmm. understand the expectations and what it takes to succeed at that level well unfortunately i was very wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just a little bit that was a big mistake on my part in yeah. terms of the way that i approached them initially yeah you know for me one thing i was told is, as you know a coach when i was a little bit younger is players don't care what you know until they know that you care right yeah that's a bar i like that you like that one i like that a lot actually yeah off the dome <laughs> off the dome i like that that's good but it's true yeah so i wanted to make sure they they knew that i was there for them mm -hmm. you know and i wanted to build the relationship with them first and foremost yeah and so you could argue that I was probably a little bit too soft with them coming in. Yeah. Because I had selected a lot of players that were not ECNL players yet. They had no experience with ECNL. I think that I maybe had three, four players on my roster coming in that From had that ECNL experience. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them were coming from classic one yeah classic two maybe even yeah. plano premier i have a couple of players that played plano premier last yeah. year that's a huge jump it's a massive jump but my eyes i see the player yeah. you know i see mm -hmm. the qualities that they have and i knew that like i could develop them technically physically mm. they were at that level yeah even though they've never been given that chance before but mentally not even close yeah not even close mm -hmm. and that's something that i learned the hard way and so you know again arguably you could say that i came in a little bit too soft with them mm -hmm. i mean not even arguably like i'll just straight up say yeah. it i made a mistake in the way mm -hmm. that i approached them initially yeah <clears throat> so after we kind of got you know say it <laughs> our ass whoops there you go there you go <laughs> we got our ass whoops. Yeah, we don't have a cookie jar yet for the cuss words but we'll get one <laughs> we don't need one it's gonna happen we got our ass whoop yeah the first you know few games of the mm -hmm. season yeah um well, which, before you before you get into that do you think that you came in with them too soft or do you think you already expected them to have somewhat of a mindset at that ecnl level i if mean that makes sense for sure that for sure that for sure that okay but if i had if i had the information already yeah. knowing that they weren't ready for that level mm -hmm. or understood what it took to be successful at that level i would have approached them completely differently from the beginning okay so yes and no to mm -hmm. your question right like i do <clears throat> think i came in too soft but do i think that like with all the information at my disposable disposal mm -hmm. if i would have come in that way okay and the answer is no i wouldn't have yeah right so mistake on my part mm -hmm. but also learning experience oh, right exactly so there was a learning yeah. curve for me just as there was a learning curve for a lot of these players yeah um i think that we saw right off the bat a lot of players started developing real quick mm -hmm. real quick 
and you know we had you know a rough start but even through preseason we looked good we played some of the top teams you know from classic one no we didn't play any ecnl teams yet yeah. but we played some of the top classic one teams mm. and and really were like the yeah, better team we, we dominated some mm -hmm. of those games yeah. so i was like okay feeling good about ourselves coming into you know the ecnl season and you know i mentioned this in a in in a couple uh, in one of the past podcasts that we did but started our ecnl season zero and eight Oof. straight up Oof. that's rough yeah i mean that's probably a little worse than rough it's <laughs> about as bad as it can get. Yeah, it's about 150 grade sandpaper right there. <laughs> That's rough. Man, we getting we getting yeah. burned. But even with it being rough, I mean, it was one of those things where it is rough. But it's not like every game you were playing, you were getting beat like 8-0. Our first two anything. games were that way. They were that bad? We lost 6-1 and 5-1. Okay. Or maybe 5-1 and 5-1, yeah. right? And that was mm -hmm. that first weekend. So like aggregate 10-2 first weekend. Yeah, it's a tough one. So that was a slap up. in the face, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a slap in the face. So, but yes, you're right. The next six games mm -hmm. that we lost, we were, yeah. we had a pos we were in a position to win every single one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, there was that, right? And, and it was a big learning curve for the players, but also myself. Mm -hmm. I realized very quickly that these players didn't have the mental capacity to hold themselves to the standard they needed right off the bat. Yeah. by themselves without without me bringing it out of them mm -hmm. so i had to change my approach and and i got a lot more strict i started to be a little bit more of a hard ass on them yeah um and you know that's what i had to do and i let them know that like you know i tried to be cool with them in the beginning mm -hmm. and tried to give them a little bit of a longer leash and ultimately you know they took advantage of that and so now they they lost that privilege. Yeah. Like they were going to be on a tight leash mm -hmm. for the next however long it took to get on the right track. And right away we started flying. Right away. Right away. So the next after we started 0 and 8 um last 3 months of the season we only lost two games, mm -hmm. right? So it was like a clear difference. Mm -hmm. We came into the futsal season, players were in high school which already like was something that I wasn't really fond of. I didn't yeah. want to let them play high school because at that level, you really shouldn't be playing high school, wasting your time with yeah, that yeah. because at the end of the day, like that's not what's going to get you to that next level. Like mm -hmm. it's more of a social, you know, experience than anything else. Yeah. It's more of like a, like kind of like you were talking about a tight leash. There's like a way less, like the leash is basically probably non-existent with that. Yeah. It's essentially with that high school team. It's just the coach is there and you're playing with your friends. You're playing for your school, which is fun. You have your friends that get to come out and watch and stuff like that. And I'm sure like even when you played high school, like it's a nice, it's a nice little, it's fun. It, it's, it seems like a it's break. Fun. And at the level that those boys are at, they shouldn't have a break. You don't get a break. Yeah. Not that it, obviously it's fun. It's a break. But what, with the level they're playing at still is fun with the DKSC, the ECNL is fun, but even just with so with the high school soccer, it's just like you're kind of losing games and then you're starting to just kind of do stuff that you don't normally do in games and you're playing at high levels. Right. You're probably playing different positions. There's a lot of the high school coaches. I mean, I know not for me, my high coach is really good, but for a lot of high school coaches, like they're not really coaches for the most part. And so it's like they're – it is a break. It's like something easy for them. It's more fun and that's like a big way for them to pick up like – Bad just habits. Bad habits. Like habits they've never had before. They'll just pick it up there. It's like, oh, their team's losing. Well, they'll just stop running. Yeah. Their team's losing. They'll just start kicking people. Maybe they'll just ask for a sub. As opposed to if it's the higher level they're playing with the ECNL, it's like none of that stuff's going to be acceptable. Right. Because if they do that, they can get, you'll yank them off. You're not going to play in the rest of the half. But in high school, it's like if you're a player like at that level going to high school, it's like you're, you're not going to get pulled out unless you do something like idiotic. Because there's not going to be another man that can do what you do there. I mean, obviously some schools there are, but for the most part, that school has five, five is probably being generous, probably what, like two or three players that play at a high, high level. The rest of them play kind of there. And then the rest don't even really play outside of it. So, I mean, it's like you pick up these bad habits and you get away with it. And that was one of the reasons why I even brought up this topic when you asked about it was just because that's one thing 
when you talked about them going off to high school soccer is it's like obviously that break they're still going to be the same person but it's like going to play that high school level what are they going to come what are they going to bring back from how that? are they going to come back yeah. yeah are they going to come back with that same attitude and then quickly realize oh hey this isn't the same level this isn't the same thing hopefully they don't hopefully they just come straight back and they're clicking right back they know it yeah but yeah back when you're talking about high school soccer it's like i mean at that, that level, you don't have to. And I think that's why even like when I was in school and like they first started doing the whole academy thing, it was like they just didn't let them play high school soccer. Yeah. 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 And and that was something that I was really concerned about. Mm. And But coming into this, like with it being a brand new team, all new players, you know, me being a new coach, like I didn't have the leverage to say, nope, sorry, can't play high school. Yeah. But now... Going into next year, I mm. think after, you know, the players seeing the level of high school, the parents seeing the level of high school versus what they're getting here and how yeah. much they're developing with me, mm. I'm going to be able to say that. And yeah. I mean, I'll just say straight up right here on this podcast, that's going to be the standard <laughs> next year. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, we're not going to waste any more time. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if they're spending time there mm -hmm. away from the 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 environment that we've created at mm -hmm. DKSC yeah. with our team, it is a waste of time. Yeah, they, 100%. They, they are only delaying their development. Mm -hmm. And at that age, 15, going on 16, they are literally right at the age where you should be signing a professional contract. Yeah, for sure. Literally. Yeah. Like the average age worldwide mm -hmm. of players – who signed their first professional contract about 16 and a half. Yeah. That's the average age. So you're talking about like right now where they're at right now going into their next year. That's the age that they should be signing a professional contract and make no mistake. That is our purpose. That is our objective with them yeah. is to send every player yeah. to that level because mm -hmm. they, at that level, if they're already playing at this level, they should have ambitions to play professionally mm. because you can, right? And yeah. it's not just playing first division, right? Mm -hmm. It's not even just playing second division. If you can if you can find a place to play where you are making a living and supporting yourself, yeah. that is the dream. That is mm -hmm. success. And, and you have won. You've won, right? That's what you ultimately want to accomplish. So... You know, then college soccer is kind of a safety net for them. Yeah, and so you it's know, where a lot of them will end up. But I mean, it's it's and they'll it's, end up and they'll end up at good ones if they're shooting for that goal that you're talking about. Of course, is of thing. course, yeah. yep. And and of course, we're talking about you know all of the responsibilities that they have off the field as well, making mm. sure that they get good grades in school because yeah. if they don't, then they're closing a lot of those doors. Oh, hundred percent. So that is important, but school soccer is just a distraction from that see and that's one thing so the ecnl season obviously takes a break whenever those three months are happening i don't yes. get why it takes a break well it doesn't have to right because like, i don't think whenever i was that age and there were some players playing academy it was i think it just went year round and i think if it goes year round it's almost like you can't from the jump like it doesn't it wouldn't even have to be your decision it's just like it's the reason pretty it, obvious. The reason it does here is because yeah. North Texas high schools play in the winter, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, because other ECNL teams mm. let their players play high school yeah. soccer, uh, they choose not to schedule games during that time. Gotcha. So building your schedule at the ECNL level is up to the clubs. And the clubs all have to align their games from U13 through U19 mm together you know oh, so okay, that makes sense. so you know if u16 u17 u18 19 mm. are all out you know for high school soccer yeah then of course u13 u14 u15 yeah. also have to take that break as mm -hmm. well yeah so that's just the way it is but during that period we can really gain a leg up oh, on our competition yeah. by just focusing on the training yeah and so that goes back to yeah. you know our, our developmental structure that we were talking about with our Footy Factory Academy teams mm -hmm. is every winter we would focus on futsal. Yeah. We would put outdoor to the side. Mm -hmm. We'd just play futsal. And what we saw was 
speed of play accelerated Mm -hmm. cognitive development accelerated yeah you know their technique their quality on the ball Mm -hmm. was so much sharper so Mm -hmm. much more efficient yeah coming out of the futsal season we would always struggle in the fall. Through winter, we would rev up those engines. Mm-hmm. We'd speed everything up in their minds with the tools that they had at their disposal, their their feet, their ability to, to manipulate the ball. And then in the spring season, we'd be flying. Yeah. And we'd see so much development, so much mm-hmm. success. And then with those teams, we'd get to the end of the spring season. Parents would be so happy with their players' development. Yeah. And now they're like, okay. Yeah, see Texans, later. what up? See you later. FC Dallas, what up? <laughs> and then we start all over again in the fall. Yeah, it's just fortunately a... I'm in a position now to where I don't have to worry about that. No, if, yeah, yeah. if anyone wants to leave, like see you. Bye. Yeah. You know, where are you gonna get anything better? Yeah, obviously at that at the at the level you're at now, it's like especially with them getting a little older, now it's essentially the only reason they'd want to leave or for reasons you'd want them to leave where they're literally probably gonna sign a pro contract. Or something right. like that, or they're going on a trial somewhere. It's and I'll it's stuff like that. that. Yeah, and, exactly. And even and even with the Footy Factory Academy teams, like yeah, yeah. if a player genuinely was leaving for a better mm. opportunity, yeah, my goodness, I will hold your hand. I will yeah. walk you into that mm-hmm. position. Yeah, like I will be there for you. I'll have my arm around mm. you every step of the way. Yeah, like tell me what you need, mm. but fact of the matter is at u8 u9 u10 u11 u12 what opportunity are you going to find that's better than what we are providing yeah you're not going to find one so the priorities were just off Mm -hmm. at that level so bringing it back to what we were talking about coming out of this futsal season i know for a fact that we are going to be much much better this spring than we were in the fall no no and eight start Hell no. I'm <laughs> just kidding. My boy, we're about to win everything this spring. I'm telling you there that. There you go. I'm telling you that. It is on this podcast. I'm looking at you right in the eyes, camera. Everything. We're taking everything. Okay? I like that. I like that. And the reason for that is because we have set the standard. Mm-hmm. And we've created a culture. And that took time to create. Yeah. But like you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. it happened a lot faster than... I anticipated. Yeah. I was convicted in my values. I knew that like it was it was going to happen. I knew I was doing all the right things, even though I was facing criticism from mm. people on the outside that didn't know what was happening. Yeah. But I knew that it was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. It happened a lot faster than I expected. So now there's a new challenge. Mm-hmm. We set the bar. Now we have to raise the bar. Yeah. And ultimately you know creating a culture which is what this podcast is about is a combination of what you create and what you allow into your environment and and there's three pillars of culture it's your values your attitudes and your goals values are your standards what do you stand for who are you like what do you represent as an individual because at the end of the day your team your players they match the identity of their leader yeah and and so, you know, it might take time for them to see it and recognize mm-hmm. it and realize it. But at the end of the day, the players see everything. They see everything. So who are you? How how are you carrying yourself? And who do you want your players to be? And are you that? If you're that, then it's going to happen, right? It's just going to take time. And you could be doing all the right things and still not get the results but ultimately if you continue to stay consistent it will turn around for you and the same thing applies to individual training as well you know this isn't just about creating a team culture but uh, individual training culture as well which is what we try to create with our footy factory training yeah you know we all we have independent trainers that all work separately Mm -hmm. but we work with them to make sure they're creating a unified culture that we want all footy factory training to represent. What standards do you hold yourself to? What standards do you hold yourself to? I mean, just a guy that, you know, wants to work hard. I believe in respecting other people. Just like, obviously, I mean, it's going to sound cheesy. I mean, what's the footy factory model? What's the standard? 
with the gold standard, man. With the gold standard, man. I think it's simple as that. I mean, I think it's just uh, just giving your best, even when things aren't going your way. Yep. I think it's staying positive. Yeah, I think those are the biggest things. And I mean, kind of going back to what you were talking about with um, just kind of like the culture and how you kind of had to build it with your boys. It comes down to like, what are the cultures that their previous teams have been with? Like what True. what type of culture is that coach trying to influence or trying to create with them? And then you talked about as well, just how they have to find that one leader. I think that's the biggest thing. And I think one thing that your team, what happened with your team is at first they were, there was probably like one or two leaders that were probably doing the right thing, but then everyone else was kind of like not really doing to as much. To be fair, we don't, we don't have a bona fide leader yeah, still. Yeah. So, still. So kind of with that, it's like you have a couple guys, maybe they're not leaders, but they're doing exactly what they should do. Yeah. But then you have the rest of the boys who are just kind of doing whatever and they're kind of, just like kind of messing around, but they're serious here and there. And so who would be the outcast in that situation right there? The outcasts are the two that the two are actually are doing, the doing right it things. right. Yeah. And so I think with your team, what happened is you got so strict with them when you needed to, you know, you're being a hard ass with them like you should. That slowly, those two guys are actually doing everything right. It started to trickle down and then it got to the point where, oh, if you're messing around, that's not cool. Like you're the outcast. Or yeah. if you're not working as hard as we are, then that's not cool. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. And I think that's ultimately how the culture itself gets built is a lot of times. I mean, even looking back, like when we were in grade school, it's like everyone always made fun of the nerdy kid. Yeah. But then as you get older, it's like, Oh man, grades really matter. Yeah. Like I need grades, I need good grades. And then at that point you start looking at the kids that aren't showing up to class, like they're idiots. You start looking at the people that don't pay attention in class that aren't the ones doing it. Exactly. And so, I mean, with, what you did is just getting them to all slowly get on the same page to the point now where it's like, that culture is just, there's nothing but a hundred percent effort. There's nothing but you have to listen. You have to be a practice. You have to, you have to track back. You have to work hard, that type of whole thing. And so now there's no more of the, that group that's just messing around because yep. if they do, then at that point they're the outcast with it. And then I think it's going to get to the point where now everyone's in the same level or the same, I guess, commitment. They, they're with the culture, they're in it. And then I think that's probably what really brings those true leaders out is because if everyone's on the same page and someone has to be the one that wants to, my fault, not page. If everyone's on the same level, then someone on your team, maybe two people on your team are going to realize that they want to be at a different level. And then it's just the whole thing is going to start over again. It's like, well, they're the leaders here. That starts to trickle down and then it gets up and then it gets up and then it gets yeah. up. And I think that you obviously saw that happen in those last three months yeah when y'all turned all the results over yeah i mean you hit it on the head right there mm -hmm. like you know that's exactly what happened like yeah. in the beginning there were i would say and i called it my top five yeah right mm -hmm. there was my top five mm -hmm. and they were the players who were the quietest they were the most yeah, quiet yeah. on the whole on the whole mm -hmm. team yeah they were afraid to say anything because they didn't want to feel like the outcast exactly yeah. They were the ones doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that they never made mistakes. Of course, everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. But the intensity that they trained at, the level of focus and attention mm -hmm. to detail that they put into everything that they did, you know, the way that they took care of themselves mm -hmm. outside of sessions, yeah. what they did in the classroom, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how they acted in... in on away trips. On away trips. Yeah. You know, how they acted just, you know, within the session during breaks, you know, yeah. uh, when they were asked to do something, mm -hmm. did they do it or did they not? Like they were always yeah. the ones that did, but they were the quiet ones. Yeah. And so they never held anyone else accountable. So mm -hmm. those aren't leaders. They're no, not they're leaders not. yet. They're not. But they are doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And so once you start to flip the script, and put the focus on them and make them feel like the the big man. Mm -hmm. Now everyone else sees that. Now they want to be that. Exactly. And 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 it's that that ultimately changes the focus from trying to be the cool kid mm -hmm. to trying to be the best yeah. kid. Because then once they all get to that level and the culture is built, that is the cool kid. That is the cool kid. That's the one that's the best. And that's what I told him so many times. It's like. You're not cool, uh -huh. like messing around in training. 
yeah. not taking things seriously. Mm-hmm. That's not cool. No, no one, not no one cares about that. Mm-mm. What's cool mm-hmm. is going pro. Yeah, that's cool. That's mm-hmm. what people are going to talk yeah. about. And mm-hmm. you're not going pro with the attitude that you no, have right no now. Shot. And I thought another thing you said right there was good about the um, how you had the boys that were kind of at the top, but they were quiet. And they were, you said they weren't perfect. They were making mistakes, but the mistakes they were making are fine. Those are the mistakes that you encourage them to make. Those are mistakes they make where they're working hard, they're listening, they're doing stuff, but maybe it just didn't come out. It's not mistakes because they don't care. It's mistakes yeah. because they don't listen to the team talk or the tactical talk. It's like, right. it's mistakes because they're actually, you know where their intention is. You know how, the level they hold themselves at. And so with that mistake, it's literally more of a lesson in that situation as yes. opposed to with... The other ones, it's like, you don't even know where the mistake comes from because yeah. the mistake could be from them not being good enough. The mistake could come from them not listening. The mistake could come from them not taking it serious. And that's just the most frustrating thing in mistakes the world. Mistakes matter, yeah, for yeah. sure. Mistakes matter yeah. in a good way because mm-hmm. if, if you don't make mistakes, yeah. you don't develop. But you have to make the right mistakes. And exactly. if you're making the wrong mistakes, mm-hmm. which is what you're talking about, yeah. not mm-hmm. even being consciously aware of the yeah. mistakes that you're making... Mm-hmm that's where there's a problem no big problem and but at the end of the day what it comes down to is does the leader practice what they preach Mm -hmm. if you don't then your message is just lost because no one is going to care what you say Mm -hmm. because you're not even you're not even doing the things that you say Mm -hmm. right like i carry myself in a way that you know it's like you can follow me you can come with me and i'll show you the way Mm -hmm. But if not, that's fine too. Yeah. But you're not going to get there. Mm-hmm. And 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 so, you know, the players are starting to recognize that even if they don't want to admit it. I think that, you know, they still, I mean, we have a good relationship, right? We joke yeah. around, you know, they're able to like razz me a little bit. I give them shit here and there, but it's all in good fun, right? Yeah. And they have that on switch. They, yeah. they're, they're starting to, they're starting to understand when you can have that behavior, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then when you have to turn it back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the main thing for me is like, I'm a, I want to have a good personal relationship with all yeah. of my players because ultimately, like for me, I never had that in a coach. Mm-hmm. Never. I never had a, a coach where I was like, really like, I feel like, you know, they're going to be, a, that's going to be a lifelong relationship. Yeah. Um, I take that back. There are, is I get what, or, I get I get what you're saying though. Yeah, there's yeah, one or yeah. two where yeah. I still kind of talk to, um, yeah. but it was a very brief time that I was you mm-hmm. know coached by them. Yeah, it wasn't like a whole, it wasn't as like a it malleable super, state super where they're impactful. at where they're at right now. Like this is like a big time in their not only just their soccer career obviously, but just like their life. Right. Yeah. So you know we have that relationship, but what I've told them from the beginning is like. I want to be able to have that relationship mm-hmm. for you, with you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're here to work. We're here to get a job done. Mm-hmm. And so so you got to be able to turn it on when it's time to turn it on. Yeah. When it's time to work, we got to get down to work. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah. And and again, it's how do you carry yourself as a leader? Mm-hmm. Like what values do you represent? What yeah. standards do you hold yourself to? And of course, like the things that I'm working for professionally and personally are uh, a bit different than, than where they're at right now. They're younger. They have more opportunity. Like, like obviously I'm not going to go pro at this point. Like I've, I've, you know, I've been through that. I've had that, I've had that time. I've had unless my knee injuries. Uh, unless it's, where was it? Where did Abu, Abdul say, what is the golden boot? What did they say? Oh yeah. Unless, unless I, it's in uh, Unless I go to Ethiopia. Ethiopia. <laughs> Shout out Golden Boot, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. maybe I can get a fake birth Lord certificate. Dude, man. That was, but I get what you're saying. If I was actually uh, 21 at this point, then maybe we'd have a chance. I wouldn't, man. These knees are shot. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, at the end of the day, like the the way that you carry yourself and 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 what you represent, yeah, it translates to everything that you oh, do. 100. So even if these boys decide they don't want to go pro, they mm-hmm. don't want to play soccer, yeah. that's fine. Like, that's totally fine. What do you want to do? Yeah. That culture if still we, remains the same. Th- those know? standards remain the yeah. same. Like, the way that you achieve success is mm-hmm. going to be the same. And yeah. I think sport 
is the one thing that teaches you everything about life. Oh, for sure. And how to be successful. Yeah. Everything. So, you know, they're starting to see that. They're starting to see, like, how serious I am. Yeah. But also how I can still relate to them on mm -hmm. a personal level. And I think in the beginning, there was only that relation because they didn't know how serious I was. Mm -hmm. And through time, yeah, they're starting to pick up on that. And they're starting to match my energy. And, and so the bar was set in that fall season. We started to turn things around. We started to win everything. Mm -hmm. Now we got to raise the bar. Yeah. Now it's about taking that next step. Mm -hmm. How do we continue to challenge them? How do we continue to motivate them to, to want to keep that level and keep pushing that level? And that comes down to the attitudes of, of the team the accountability in the team and that ultimately is reliant on secondary leaders like you were talking about yeah. a minute ago mm -hmm. what if it's just one person preaching the message gets lost yeah but if it's two three four five mm -hmm. six seven eight nine yeah. players all kind of rallying behind that message then all of a sudden they're not the outcast anymore, but it's the players that aren't on that same wavelength yeah. that are the outcasts. Yeah, exactly. And they then kind of weed themselves out of the picture. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, like it's the negative behaviors that you neglect mm -hmm. within the team, the ones that you allow, the ones that you don't pay attention to, they can be more detrimental than the impact that positive behaviors can have. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So if you don't get secondary leaders, if you don't mm -hmm. get, you know, a, 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 a leadership team working towards that same goal, mm -hmm. then at the end of the day, you're going to be beating your head against the wall, trying to, trying to create something, trying to create a culture that is never going to be established. You need more people working for it. You need a team. You need you need you need uh, you know players that believe in in what you are trying to accomplish, and then players that are willing to come out of their comfort zone, yeah, to implement it and to hold others accountable to that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you get to that point, once you start having additional leaders where you don't necessarily even have to be the main voice. Yeah. You can rely on them mm -hmm. to be the voice. It's, it gets to the point where even if there's one player that's not in line, that can ruin the whole bunch, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got to be rowing in the same direction. So if that one player is not on task, if they're the one outcast, it's easy to just put, put them to the side bring someone else in yeah but until you get that mm -hmm. you're never going to have that opportunity yeah i mean it's kind of like uh i'm trying to remember if i even this actually might be my next blog post but it's kind of something along the same lines as that where it's just like how you don't have to have the armband to be the captain yep type of thing where it's like obviously there's that one person that uh they might be the most vocal or they might be the one that's like not afraid to speak their mind or if for the coach or for themselves on behalf of the rest of the team, they'll probably have the armband. They might not be the best player though, but maybe sometimes the best player is one that has the armband, but then he relies on the rest of the team to be just as vocal and do just what he's talking about as yeah. well. Or my fault. Like, so he's what he's showing. So he might not be talking about it, but he's setting the standard. He's showing the standard, but if there's not other people that see that, but then can also talk about it. It's not going to work out. And so, kind of like how you said that one person might weed out, I feel like a lot of the time it's, hopefully in your case, it's like sometimes they don't even weed out. Sometimes what you weed out is just their attitude. Yeah. And so... Very good point. Yeah. I mean, even when we were going back to like our club teams and stuff, it's like, they were young, obviously. But we had, we would have, we I mean, had a handful of players that were always on time, always showed up, always worked hard, were leaders and stuff like that. And then... A good amount of maybe didn't do as much but at that age it's like 
if that person's getting onto that person, it's like, oh, why are you yelling at me? Well, oh, we're kind of having fun with it. But the culture you built and the level they're at, it's like, no. It's not going to fly here. It's not going to fly. It's not going to fly. Because, like, they'll, they'll either, they're either going to man up and choose to, you know, change their ways and figure out how they can fit into this team by actually accepting the culture and actually being on board with everyone else. Or, like you said, they'll just, they'll just go somewhere else. Yep. Type of thing. So... It's just important. It's definitely important to have like just the secondary ones as well. Because I mean, even talking about keep going back to FF Academy days, how we were just talking about like we were trying to get some of those players just to do the bare minimum, and we weren't even able to coach about you have to track back, you have to run, you have to press. There if you no- have if you have that captain and those leaders, they don't even have to say that to the players because they're already going to know that's what they have to do, and then they already know that you don't have to say it. Because they know they have to do it. Yes. And then at the point where if they don't do it, they're honestly not even... They're probably more scared of what their captain's going to say to them or what their teammates are going to think than what you're going to say to them. Because it's all about peer pressure. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing we were talking about before. Is like you, you don't want to be the outcast. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be the one that doesn't nope. fit in, right? Nope. And so if you get that pressure from your peer... Mm-hmm. To, to to be doing something yeah you're more likely going to do that than getting it just from the coach mm, exactly 100 percent. yeah but the coach sets that standard yeah he does and and he's got to continue to reinforce that standard yeah and then it comes down to the point where the coach is literally there just tactically and just trying to get his players up and that's what the coach is for and yeah. that's something that like i'm Co- starting to yeah the coach the- isn't there to joystick the players around the coach isn't there to bark continuous orders that are very make, obvious is to make adjustments yeah. to put out a game plan and then mm-hmm. make adjustments within the game mm-hmm. to put the team in a best pos- yeah. in the best position to mm-hmm. succeed yeah. and that's the next step now that i have with my group coming out of the spring season or sorry the winter season um you know the players that have been coming regular regularly to our futsal sessions we only had one session a week through the yeah. winter you know, because there was no point in having three sessions a week if I was only getting half the team yeah, exactly. the sessions, right? Mm-hmm. So it was one futsal session a week, but the ones that were committed to it, I mean, I could see how much they developed technically. Mm-hmm. They were getting so much more comfortable on the ball. They were understanding how to move, how to find space, um, how to interchange positions, how to, you know, just their speed of play increase, like, I knew that going back into outdoor, that those were the players that were going, that will ultimately, we obviously haven't done anything yeah. yet. We've only had a couple of outdoor sessions, but those are the players that will have a big spring season. I mm-hmm. know it. Yeah. I know it. And, you know, with them now coming into the spring season, my big challenge for them is. Who's going to take charge within the game? Who's going to solve the problems within the game? Because I can't be the one that's always fixing problems for them. Yeah. You don't see LeBron James going to Frank Vogel, which, by the way, is he even a coach? I don't even know. No. I don't think so. I don't even know who they have right now. I mean, they, they need a new one. They suck. They're bad. <laughs> but LeBron is a champion, right? No, yeah, 100%. He's a champion. Yeah. He's a true definition of a yeah. champion. Mm-hmm. A champion is not just about the trophies and the medals that you have. Yes, mm-hmm. he's lost a lot. Yeah. But the man is a champion in every sense of the word. Mm-hmm. You don't see him going to his coach for instructions every five seconds. Mm-mm. He's not relying on someone to tell him what to do. Yeah. He knows what to do and he knows how to get the the best out of the players around him mm-hmm. too. That's what a champion does. And that's what a leader does. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm asking for from them now. That's the big challenge that I'm putting forth for them is who's going to step up in the game when Mm -hmm. things are going to shit, who is going to be the one to pull the team out of that and and start to turn things in the right direction? Mm -hmm. I cannot do that. I'm on the sideline. I'm not on the field. I can't run for players. I can't communicate for players. I can't tackle for players. I can't you know, pass for players. Mm-hmm. And and I can't do that. I'm on the sideline. I'm watching the game. I'm observing the game. I'm there to make adjustments yeah. to the game, 
to put pos- players in the best position to, to be successful. So it's on them now to figure things out for themselves. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see a little bit more of that. Yeah. Starting to see a little bit more of that. Um, I even think the the fact that y'all went through that hard spell at the beginning and then it got a lot better, I think you're going to see a leader come out the second it starts to even look like it's going back that way. Yeah. Because there's going to be one person that maybe they weren't the loudest, maybe they weren't the most vocal, but if that happens in a game or they see maybe you lose a game and the practice is bad and the next game kind of starts off, I think that's going to force someone to step up. Someone's going to speak their mind. They got to. And they're, and I mean, even at first, like a lot of times when people become vocal and they even start to become leaders, it's just because they can't help it. It's just because they see something going wrong. They know that's not where it should be. They don't see anyone else say it. And then it just almost comes out as an outburst at first. But then that outburst that comes out actually like lights a fire under people's ass. And then they're like, oh, hey, well, I did this. This time, what if I keep doing this even when things aren't going bad? And that's going to allow that person to actually kind of step out of the comfort zone and get there. 100%. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have said it any better yeah. myself. Like standards, yeah. standards. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing that we're talking about yeah. with the coach, with the leaders. Like you hold yourself to a certain standard. You literally cannot help yourself whenever things are below that standard. Yeah. You demand that standard. Mm. And it's not personal. If if you no, take it personally, if 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 you can't handle someone getting after you in that context, that's your problem. That's your problem. You're playing the wrong. You shouldn't be in a team sport, man. You should not be in a team sport. You know, that's that's your own problem that you yeah. gotta deal with. Mm-hmm. If you can't handle that, that's on you. Yeah. But top players, leaders hold themselves to a high standard. And if you're a supporting player, first of all, everyone plays a, a role. Not yeah. everyone is a top five player, mm-hmm. right? But that was my last podcast. I got you. Next <laughs> one's coming up. This is the know your role. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah know yeah. your role, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone has their own role to play. Mm-hmm. So not everyone's going to be a leader. But are you going to follow someone else's lead? Mm-hmm. I told my players this, and this is going to be a theme throughout this spring season. Doesn't matter who's right. Yeah. Just matters that we get it right. There you go. We just got to get it right. It's another bar, man. Bars. <laughs> Calm down, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got more of them in my back pocket. Just about wait. to be all the girls' IG captions for the rest <laughs> of the year, man. Keeping that up. You know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, all jokes aside. Yeah. Like, you cannot take things personally in that mm, way. No. If you want to play at the highest level, you either got to take the lead or mm-hmm. you got to follow someone's lead. Yeah. And that's something that any player can take with mm-hmm. them that can hopefully help them yeah. be be the best that they can be, yeah. right? Like, again, know your role. Yeah. What role do you play? And are you playing it to the best of your ability? Mm-hmm. And, you know, then going back to like you know, the standards, right? Mm -hmm. Like, are those standards aligned with the goals that the team is trying to achieve? Yeah. That's the last piece. Do you know what your goals are? What Mm -hmm. do you want to accomplish as a group? If you have high standards, if you have leaders holding other people accountable, Mm -hmm. what are you holding them accountable to? And that's to the goals that you've set. Yeah. You got to be clear about it. You mm-hmm. got to know exactly yeah. what you're working for. And even if you want to be clear about it, it's like you can't just have one out of the three. You can't just have two out of the three. You got to have all three. All three of them. All three. Well, I mean, I guess you could have the first two that could lead to the third. But I remember because even with FF Academy, one thing we did at the beginning of the year, both the years that I coached with you, is we laid out our goals. Yep. We made sure they were realistic. Even the ones that weren't even that high for them, for that team. But it was something that like, I don't want to talk bad about it, but it would, it was just leaving along the lines of like, just like have a winning season or like make a final of a tournament. It's stuff yeah. like that. It's where like, obviously the goal we really want to hit is to win this. We want to do all this, but it's like, is that realistic? And everyone's going kind of like a no, it's okay. Well, let's find out what's realistic for us. And then yeah. you got to figure out the rest of it. So we had the goals set. We had the other stuff from some of the players, but not from everyone. 
Yeah. And so that's why it was never actually attained. It was, we never actually reached those goals Yep. that we set. But like you're talking for you, it's like you have those, your team has those goals already. They know what they're doing, but the most important part is that they have, they know the values and then they know the standard and they're holding themselves to the standard. So now they basically unlock the door. They, are they going to walk in or not? That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's like, so right there, like what you're saying is basically like the values and the standards that that you hold yourself to determine your identity, Mm -hmm. right? They, they, they are who you are. That's who you are, right? If you're, if you're a professional athlete, who you are is that, like, that's what you do. You yeah. don't, you, you make sacrifices because of the person that you are. Mm-hmm. You live your life in a different way than someone who has a completely different career. No. From there, we have our attitudes, the accountability that we have towards one another. And those are the processes, right? At the end of the day, our daily behaviors, they reflect our deepest beliefs about ourselves like who do we feel that we really are if i truly feel that i can be a professional player Mm. like am i doing the things every day that a professional player would do yeah you know it's 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 like what we have to do at the end of the day what players have to do is they have to be what they want to be what do you want to be what, what do you want to accomplish? Who, who is the person you want to be? And how would you feel inwardly and then ultimately act outwardly if you already were that, mm-hmm. right? Identify that. Be that. So I, our identity plus the processes that we implement for ourselves equal the outcomes, mm-hmm. the results. Yeah. And that's exactly what we laid out for our Footy Factory Academy mm-hmm. teams. Yeah. That equation right there, mm-hmm. identity plus processes equals outcomes. You can't mm-hmm. just have outcomes without the nah, first two. You can't. So literally, like those first two pieces, they are the ones that set up the last piece, the the, the final part of the equation. Yeah. So, you know, for any player, for any person trying to achieve anything, you can set goals. You can you know, you can, you can say that you want to be this, you can, you can try to do that. But at the end of the day, you're not going to rise to the level of your goals, Mm -hmm. the, the objectives, the outcomes that you've set for yourself. You're not just going to say, okay, I want to be a professional. And then just say to yourself every day, I want to be a professional. And then in 10 years, you're going to be a professional. (laughs) It doesn't work like that. Not at all. There are steps that you have to take. Yeah, exactly. So you don't rise to the level of your goals, but ultimately you fall to the level of your systems, mm-hmm. right? The systems that you put in place. And your systems are the processes that you take. Yeah. What are you doing every day mm-hmm. to achieve your goals? Yeah. And are you holding yourself accountable to yeah. them? That was another thing that I remember you brought up with the FF Academy boys that we did is we had each of them, I'm trying to think of a specific one, it would have been like, uh, oh, it was so, uh, I want to get better at this. So it was, I want to get better at uh, shooting with my left foot. So then from there you had them, well, how are you going to do that? And Literally, they actually had to, reverse engineer. And they had to write down, well, I'm going to take 10 shots in the back of my left foot. And you're like, okay, well, enter someone's name. Is that enough to get there? It's like, oh no. It's like, well, how many you have to do? It was like, well, I'll do 25 to 50 three days a week. And it's like, okay, well, that's we can work with that. That's what yeah. we can start with. And it's like, well, you got to keep up with that to actually get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that was another thing. It's like, obviously, some of the boys that we had, you could, without even asking them, you know they did it because you could see it. Right. You and can then, see it pay and off. And some of them will write it down because they have to, yeah. but then never Just do homework it. at that point. Exactly. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, you want to get better at shooting with your left foot, but what have you actually done to yeah. get better at shooting with your left foot? Oh, you shoot with your left foot once at practice, maybe once in a game. It's like, no. That's yeah, not going to help. Go home, do it. Practice. Practice, 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 and then you get there. Yep. Yeah. 
So if you know what results you want to see, even mm-hmm. if you can't like see yeah. it or feel it just mm-hmm. yet, even if it feels like unattainable for you, yeah. like I know what I want to accomplish. I want to coach at the professional level. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Like but I don't you know what you have to do. I don't have any like direct connections to get me in that door, mm-hmm. but like yeah. I know the steps that I have to take yeah. to get there. Mm-hmm. I know that like, you know, I need to study every day. I yeah. need to like take care of my own mindset every mm-hmm. day so that I can be the best version of myself for the players that I do have right now so that I can like get results at this level so that like yeah. my teams perform mm-hmm. at, at the best of their uh, capabilities, right? I need to get the most out of the group that I have right now so that I can then take another step and mm-hmm. get to the next level. Yeah. I need to continue, you know, pursuing more coaching education exactly i need to continue networking i need Mm -hmm. to continue doing podcasts talking about the game developing my ideas my thoughts and 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 pushing myself to a new level if i want to get there Mm -hmm. and so yes i am doing those things every day even though i can't see the end result right now Mm -hmm. it's it's out of sight but like i can still visualize it in my head so like you know where you you know where you want to get to you have an idea of where you want to get to just trying to get how to say it maybe it's like you know like what level you want to get to like what floor but it's just not which door so you know what's gonna you know what you have to do to get you there but then once you're once you do all that stuff to get you there, it's like that opens a whole new world of stuff to do. Mm. Good one. Yeah. So even if you can't see or feel like the final result, mm. even if you can't see that what's behind that door, yeah, you're not going to exactly see it. Like, yeah, you just have to let yeah. your actions, your mm. daily behaviors be the guide. Yeah. You know, you know, you want to coach professionally, but what does professionally look like? What do, coaching what do what do professional it, pl- coaches do yeah, right like, like are you gonna what team are you gonna be with what country what league what and there's gender? no way of knowing no, there's, there's no, no way, way of knowing but i know what i would be doing if i was at mm-hmm. that level so i'm already doing it yeah mm-hmm. i'm already doing it yeah so i'm in my mind i'm already a professional coach yeah. i'm already a head coach of a first division team somewhere in the world yeah. i am and you've also already created a culture with your boys now, that would be the same culture that you would maintain with the pro team that you already have, that you would end up being with. And for them too. Mm, yeah. I'm treating them like professionals. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get them to understand is like, you guys actually have a real opportunity to be professionals. Mm. So start acting like it now. Yeah. Now, I'm going to treat you like one. You need to start acting like one. Be a professional. If you want to be a professional, yeah. be one now. Mm-hmm. That's it. What do professionals do every day? I mean, it's literally back to the podcast we talked we did with Josh. Yeah. He's doing it all. He started doing that in high school. And look where he'll be in a year. He's on the way. Yeah. He's on the way. Yeah. Josh Ramsey, remember the name. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one thing then on top of that is like, you know, setting individual goals. Mm-hmm. Um of course, like being a professional can be a long-term goal, but you need to break that down into medium, short-term goals as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. So do your short-term goals contribute to the collective goal? Mm-hmm. And if they do, then that's helping to create a culture of success. Yeah. And success breeds success. Mm-hmm. Winning breeds more winning. Confidence breeds confidence, right? Yeah. It's like all these, like, it's just a domino effect. Like once you put, once you take that first step and you just keep taking steps at the end of the day, you're going to find yourself a mile down the road Hmm. and then two miles down the road. And then all of a sudden you're across the country, you know, and in a place where you really want to be. So it's like, what, what are you doing today to get you to where you want to be later? Mm -hmm. And all of those things, all of those things that we just talked about are fundamental to building a top, top culture. That's what this podcast is about. There you go. That's what it's about. That's all it is. Yeah. I don't even know what else to say. Unlocking potential. (laughs) That's it, man. No, I mean, we did. We touched on everything. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's really cool to see you 
doing that with these boys and it paying off just because, I mean, I've, it's not like you just woke up and decided to do it with them. Cause even when we were coaching together, like you would always, you were the and main doing all the same. Well, yeah. Thing. Well, cause I would always be like, Oh, I'm not happy with this, with this, with that. And you'd do the same thing. And then you'd be like, okay, well we can try and change it. We need to change it. And it's all the stuff you're doing with your team. Now, obviously it's not as, Hey, write this down. Like we had to do with the younger players, but it's still essentially the same thing. And so the cool thing about it is we talked about how players come to us or some of the players that came to you at the start of the season, they didn't, they probably played on a team that didn't have a culture. They played on a team where the coach didn't do all that. And so now it's like, not only are you helping them get to where they're supposed to be eventually, but now, I mean, you're actually like setting a standard for them that's going to last outside of soccer. So now it's whether they maybe go say some of them leave and they go to another team. Well, that coach is going to get a player that has standards, that has values. Say, you have players that leave to go to college when they graduate, or you have some that leave to go play pro. It's like, well, they're already going to be set with this way that you taught them, that you showed them how to get, and they're already going to be there with it. And so, I mean, I think that if every coach in the area kind of does it like that, if every coach really cares about their players as much as you do, is willing to put as much effort into them like that, then, I mean, that that's going to change our whole game, Yeah, the whole U.S. side of it. Oh, for sure. Because, I mean, and right now the way the U.S. side is changing is – the young players, we don't have to talk about all this right now. We'll be here for another hour. But so all the young players, they're leaving. They're going yeah. somewhere else. They're going like to other countries and stuff. And they're in an area where the culture is already set because it's yeah. a culture that's been there for like it's 30, a, 40 years. Yeah, it's long established. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, nice. These American players are finally getting good. And it's like, yeah, they're getting good because they're going to a place that has a culture. They're going to a place that plays longer seasons. They're going to a more competitive thing. They're going – that type of thing. So they're just yeah. getting thrown into it. And so, I mean, I think that with that happening now, and I think coaches realizing it over here and like, hopefully more coaches are doing, starting to do what you're doing, you know, I think it should just raise the whole level up as a whole. I hope so, man. Cause yeah. like, you know, I, I know there are a lot of coaches who aren't on that. No, and, I mean, and you know, yeah. for whatever reasons, like I'm not going to sit here and bash uh, any yeah, other yeah. coaches. Yeah. And, you know, that's yeah. not what I'm here to do. Um, mm -hmm. But my root intention is actually helping people and inspiring yeah. people to yeah. take action. And mm -hmm. that's what, like, this whole podcast is about. That's what Footy yeah. Factory is about. That's mm -hmm. what I'm about. And um, and hopefully I can do that along yeah. the way, you know. Mm -hmm. And if I can help enough people achieve their goals, then I think that I'll be successful too. Mm -hmm. And that's all for I can sure. hope for. Yeah. So you got it. That's all we got, guys. That's all we got, Footy guys. Pod 27. Footy like, pod. subscribe, review. Please. Please. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it, Just man. Just do it. Tell a friend. Listen to it in the car. Come on. You know you want to. We'll get something out of it. I promise. <laughs> Maybe some footy gear. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yes. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. You don't have to like, subscribe, review if you don't want to, but it would be very kind of you. Mm -hmm. So yep. please do. Bye. Peace.